and welcome back to your Rejoin at 120. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, false equivalences. Uh, so we're back in our logical fallacies here in the uh, a series of 120 videos. And so what is a false equivalence? So uh, there is a way you could look at it in sort of the formal sense. which is that uh, A is a set or a collection or a property uh, including two things, C and D. And that B is another set of properties or things including B and D. And that since, if, as you notice, both include the property or the thing D, uh, that both are equivalent to each other. And that this is actually not uh, really a valid way to argue. It's not a uh, true conclusion that can be you know, based on these two uh, premises. So uh, it's something that we can avoid. But what, what, it, what exactly does that mean? It, it's, in, in practice, it means equivocating. It means taking two things that are similar and trying to project or present the two of them as though they are equal in some sense that is important. Uh, so perhaps there are there is a sense in which two things are are, are, are the same or are, are, are related, but the the relation or the relationship does not uh, necessarily extend to what it is you're trying to 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 claim or trying to conclude. So if you go back to our, our video on analogies, remember this is actually very similar to reasoning by analogy, and so there's a, a danger in, in reasoning by analogy that you can try to conclude too quickly that the relationship is there, that the 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 the, 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 the way that the two things or the, the thing you're making the analogy for uh, is is uh, close enough that you can you can use it when in fact you cannot, or or when in fact uh, there's some extra difficulty that you have not yet accounted for. Um, this is something that happens all the time in advertisements. It's uh, the bread and butter of advertisements, that they can try to convince you that you are similar enough to their, their uh, target that they're uh, trying to, to, to build or, or create or conceptualize, where their, their target is giving them money, so if you're similar enough to them, therefore you should give them that money. Um, the first example of many, uh, there's a picture on, on one of the sites that discussed this uh, particular logical fallacy of a baby sleeping next to a, a meat cleaver, uh, trying to express the idea that sleeping with your baby is dangerous because babies can be harmed if you're you know, tossing and turning or whatever. Uh, there is a statistic you can look up of uh, babies getting injured or killed by sleeping with their parents. Uh, but they, tr again, try to make this, this kind of equivalence between sleeping with your baby and having your baby sleep with a sharpened meat cleaver. Obviously the two are not the same thing. Uh, you're, while there may be some danger involved, the danger is different. You're not going to have a baby that's going to be cut up by sleeping with you. Uh, unless, again, you also sleep with a meat cleaver. Uh, there, there's, the danger is different. Uh, the kinds of harms are different. The kinds of risks involved that you could protect against are different. Uh, so, is it worth pointing out? Is it worth uh, thinking about? Perhaps. Is it logically absolutely valid? Not really. You're, you're, you're discounting uh, the, the kinds of risks that you can cover, kind of cover for. And in order to get us thinking about it, uh, if, we, if we really don't think clearly about it, uh, we, we can be misled by that. Uh, here, here's another example. Gu guns and knives are both equivalent because they both blank. In fact, it doesn't matter what goes in the blank uh, because they're not necessarily equivalent. Uh, there, there's going to be public policy uh, interests in, in both controlling the use or not controlling the use of guns and knives, and they're not going to be exactly the same. And it's going to be worth discussing the difference between the two any time we try to discuss the similarities. And this is going to be kind of a common theme in that uh, while it's worth thinking about the relationships between things and building analogies between things, it's important to always try to 
look at how they're both uh, similar and different. It's, if you're using an analogy, it's worth trying to determine how the analogy holds and in what case the analogy does not hold. And try to separate out the two situations so that when you're dealing with them, you can reason clearly uh, about what you're trying to reason about. Here's another example. Uh, quote, they're both soft, cuddly pets. There's no, bit different, or there's no real difference between a cat and a dog. Again, there's lots of differences between cats and dogs. Uh, you, I'm personally allergic to cats, so uh, I, I don't really like cats because they make me sick and make it hard for me to breathe. Uh, so yes, they're soft and cuddly, but there are these little differences, uh, both in terms of their physical characteristics, their social characteristics, I mean, how intelligent they are, uh, the, the amount of times that they've spent domesticated nearby humans, there's all sorts of things you could bring up that would make the difference between a cat and a dog more important. Perhaps in some contexts those differences are not important, but in some contexts they may be. Here, here's another one. Quote, we all bleed red, there's no difference uh, between each other or from each other. Or we're, all not, or we're not all that different from each other. Uh, and you know what? Yes, we would like this to be true, uh, but there are differences between people, and there are differences that you can have uh, or th that are meaningful in, in our lives, in our day-to-day -day lives. Like, there, there are murderers, there are people who do very bad things, there are people who do very wrong things, there are people who make mistakes, there are people with a lot of power. There's very, very many ways uh, to s differentiate between human beings and human beings and near human beings, perhaps, that uh, make it meaningful to, 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 to discuss. But uh, yes, it, while it's tempting to kind of group us all into this one category, human, uh, and in fact, there is a category you know, that you could draw and make these kinds of conclusions with, at the same time, if you do so at the expense of our differences, and at the expense of being able to reason about our differences, uh, there, there may be a, a, I guess, logical cost to that, in that you may make conclusions that are not warranted. Uh, and yes, we, we would like this to be true, in some sense, especially when, when comparing each other. Uh, like, we'd love for it to be the case that everyone has the same amount of wealth, or everyone's uh, equal in, in the, the all possible senses. Uh, and but if we were to be honest with ourselves, we would notice that this is not the case. And we, if we would like this to be closer to the case, we should take actions to actually make that happen and not just merely assume it uh, out of hand uh, be before we even kind of start at or analyzing the situation that we are presented with. Um, so here's another one. Quote, Democrats are the same as Republicans. They're all the same thing. Uh, again, there's uh, there are going to be similarities between the two political parties. They're, they're, they're similar in structure. They're both made of Americans. They're you know both mostly filled with old white guys who don't understand technology. Uh, again, there th there are a lot of similar uh, and similarities. Uh, but again, there there's contexts in which the two are different, and especially in the past 15 years, you can look at the changing demographic trends within the two parties and actually see that there is a level of extremism being built up in both sides on certain issues. So. You know, yes, you can you can argue that they're they're all the same and that they're all in the, the pockets of the, the you know respective business uh, interests. But again, uh, unless you are very specific about how they are all the same and I include the possibilities for the cases where they are different, uh, there's a lot of ways you could talk or you could you could start an argument with that where you would mislead yourself later on. So, uh, I is it worth? Uh, you know, making sure that you say this in every uh, you know, instance where you're talking about the Democrat and Republican parties? Maybe, maybe not, but it's worth at least considering. Uh, so here, here's another example. You know, you go back to the, the You Are a Cockroach video. Uh, this is actually kind of, that's kind of like a sub-example of this, where you're trying to make equivalent two sets of the kingdom of Animalia, or, or the, you know, the or two, two life forms that are, are related to each other without specifying how they are different. Again, it's, it's, it's just a danger of being able to, 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 to draw analogies on, on that level. Some people think that the false equivalence is similar to the argument to moderation, and some people don't. I'm not going to make a, a stance either way. Uh, it probably doesn't really matter all that much, as long as you try not to make both uh, or either a logical fallacy or commit either. Um, but again, it's, it, it's something that's going to come up in advertisements all the time, and, and modern life is filled with advertisements. You can't, you know, go for a walk without passing by a, a, a billboard or, you know, 
can't watch a video online without getting 30 seconds of advertisement thrown at you. It's, you know, it's very difficult to escape advertisement. So this particular logical fallacy is going to be something that is, is, is kind of forced at you from so, so many different directions for so much of your life. So it, it, once, if, if you can force yourself to, to notice it whenever it happens, and ju just note it. Say, hey, a false equivalence is being made here, or an equivalence is being made. E even if you don't go to the, the extent of trying to understand how it's false, just notice that it's there. Notice, just pay attention, look at it. See if you can notice while it's happening. See if you can see the sleight of hand being done to you in your day-to-day -day life. See if you can make that happen. Um, another example, going on you know, YouTube, kind of digging around for local advertisements. Uh, there's the, the Justin Trudeau job interview uh, that the Conservative Party of Canada has put together. There's a good couple of them in here. Uh, but, of course, right off the top, a job interview is a different thing from a federal election. And so the, the, the differences and similarities are going to be uh, significant between someone who's applying for a job and someone who's appealing to the, the, the general public, uh, you know, for starters. The people who decide whether or not you're the Prime Minister of Canada are the members of Parliament in Canada, not the, you know, some unaccountable uh, group of a couple people who do not represent the interests of the country. You know, yes, there, there are maybe, uh, you know, justifiable uh, reasons why you could criticize Justin Trudeau, and they may even be the same criticisms between a job interview and the discussions uh, when forming a government after an election in Canada. Uh, however, the there again, there, there there's going to be uh, differences between the two situations. Uh, treating it purely as a job interview ignores our, our heritage of how exactly we choose government. Uh, it is kind of an insult to uh, com you know force us to com to to view things in that sense. But of course, that's exactly what the, the conservatives have done in this case. So you know, what how else could it be different, or how else could an interview be different than the way that we actually elect our Prime Minister in this country. Well, uh, again, uh, one of the things that is taken into account is the stability of government, and is the uh, ability for a government, not necessarily the Prime Minister, but the government that the Prime Minister is a part of, to uh, maintain the, the, I guess, stability and um, the continuity of government. So, for example, if you have a lot of uh, of the country who's currently pissed off at the prime minister, the current sitting prime minister, a and if the choice is between the current sitting prime minister and this Justin Trudeau guy, and Justin Trudeau just happens to sit on the balance of power that allows uh, him to 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 continue to to govern uh, after an election happens. So, for example, if he elects, or even if we don't, for whatever reason, like Justin Trudeau, and if if we take as as accepted that he's quote just not ready, then. I, again, th there's there's this other issue here, which is what else is going on in the country, and what are the interests of the co the rest of the country relative to the amount of uh, political, I guess, political power in the House of Commons. So there's there's this this thing that is just not expressible in the context of a of a job interview. You when you go for a job interview, and when people discuss your resume afterwards, they don't have to deal with, or they usually don't have to deal with the kind of political backdrop involved. You, they don't have to deal with a prime minister who's uh, kind of dropped the ball on the international stage. They don't have to deal with a prime minister who's uh, you know, not lived up to his Kyoto uh, targets that his own government has promised. These, th these are the, 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 the kind of failures of the predecessor. Uh, you know, yes, you can, your predecessor that you're, you're uh, applying for a job at uh, may end up being, you know, have created a mess. And they may have created something uh, on the same scale, even. but again, it's, it's it's something that isn't discussed in certainly that video. And in most job interviews, you don't even really think about it. That's one again, one difference between those two situations. Uh, looking at another video, there's a quote: "God made a farmer," uh, some kind of a truck video, uh, where basically they try to make the claim that you know farming is hard, which it is, uh, and so you know God, when he created the earth, created farmers so that they could do this hard work. Um, and, you know, you, you watch this video, and even if you accept that the whole, you know, existence of God, and that God made man 6,000 years ago, or 8,000 years ago, or whatever the hell, uh, and you have to f kind of have a pause, because there's an equivalent made, or an equivalence made in this video between farming today in a modern, uh, using modern tools, 
uh, in a modern economy uh, with uh, cities, you know, cities themselves, uh, compared to farming, say, 8,000 years ago, uh, that they're similar enough that you know any differences can be kind of written off. You're basically the same thing, and therefore you should give us your money. Well, I mean, it's that. What what are some differences between farming now and 8,000 years ago? Well, you know, for starters, uh, there's a lot more of the or the farmers give out some of their income uh, to uh, in trade in order to continue farming and to reinvest in their farms. Uh, that, to some extent, has been true for a while. But if you're a farmer from 8,000 years ago, you probably are a lot more independent. You have a lot more uh, self-sufficiency. You can survive off of your land. You can survive and build tools from the land itself. Uh, nowadays, you don't go out and build your own tractor. You go out and buy one. You don't go out and build your own sunglasses. You go out and buy one. You know, you're, you're, you're constantly doing this trade with, with the cities in a way that the original farmers may not have done. There's going to be other ways that things are different, too. Uh, gender relationships, the, the relationships between, uh, you know, the, when you have kids, you don't send them off to the cities and then they're gone. You, you have a you know, whole brood of kids, probably, that help you with the farming. This is something that's even changed in the past 200 years, never mind 8,000 years. So again, there's just all these little differences that come up, and if you just look, look at what they're trying to make look equivalent. Are any of those differences valid? If none of them are valid, then maybe it's a true equivalence. And maybe the, the analogy that they tried to make is, a, 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 is a, a one that represents the situation that they're trying to, to create. But of course, the, the situations in which they're trying to create are usually situations in which you give them money, or, or at least that you give them some kind of power over yourself. And you really have to be careful when looking at that, that particular situation, because often enough, uh, it, it doesn't make sense to do so, and you're losing in that transaction. Uh, so here, here's another example of uh, another video. You kind of look up these videos, advertisements. Uh, our trucks are durable be because, uh, or they try to make the claim that their trucks are durable as the people who live in cold places, like in Houghton, Michigan, which, again, I mean, hey, Canada's a little bit colder, but whatever. Uh, the uh, people are durable because of self-regulating systems within our body, because our culture allows us to work with other people to be self-regulated, or to be to allow our ecosystems and our social systems to be self-regulating so that if we're put under pressure, the pressure can be kind of spread apart in, in certain ways. Uh, uh, you know, you go to the cold, your 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 body actually will, will you know, will, will, will take blood and kind of move it closer to the, the center of yourself. It, th there's things that trucks just simply, there is no analog for. So trucks do not repair themselves. You actually have to go to a machine shop or something, to, to, or a mechanic shop, to, to repair your trucks. The, the, the truck itself is, at, le at least as far as I know, not going to be doing too much uh, self-repair. You are robust and durable because of that self-repairing function. So again, there's this equivalence that's being made here that isn't necessarily, the, 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 the important parts are not being represented. And so the, the argument that they're going to try to make from that is, again, give them money because they're, they're durable uh, and because uh, it, it's, you know, you're, you're, you're enforcing these self-regulating systems that don't exist, right? So, an, you know, final last example of a false equivalence, and, and you know, th these, these are just the, the best examples for every type of logical uh, fallacy, practically, which is, of course, beer commercials. Beer commercials, you know, you, you usually involve, they're, they're aimed at, you know, young men who don't really think a lot uh, and who drink a lot of beer. And so if you're, you know, looking at a beer commercial and, you know, the, the, the end result of the beer commercial is that, you know, drinking beer leads, you know, the characters to end up in a, a bar as, you know, big manly men, cowboys, surrounded by beautiful women singing Elton John music. Again, if you drink beer in a bar, you know, I guess there's a small chance that you may end up surrounded by cowboys and beautiful women and you know, have a great time drinking and singing with them, but a lot of the time you just sort of end up sitting next to the bar, uh, getting progressively more drunk. Uh, y you may have some kind of a social life, but uh, again, it's, it's the, 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 there is no equivalent situation there. Uh, they're going to try to make it look as though, you know, the, the, the drinking of the beer uh, is the same in both cases, but there's a really big difference between a fictional account of this beer drinking leading to these good things and what actually happens in in, in practice, for the vast majority of beer drinkers, especially uh, young men without a lot of social status and without a lot of social uh, contact, especially with beautiful women. 
So uh, again, this this is something that you can do. You can look at advertisements in your life whenever they get shown to you. You know, when the next one comes on, don't just change the channel. Don't just j try to you know get the advertisement out of your life as soon as possible. Uh, don't just you know let it. Um, you know, continue playing and not pay attention. See if you can see the equivalence that they're trying to make. See if you can see what's similar about it, what's different. If you can pause it at that point and think about it for a second, see if you can do that. But again, there's there are these equivalences being made all around you all the time. They're not to your benefit. Uh, and they're not to your benefit because they're often misleading in the areas that count. So, uh, this is going to be the, the end of the video today. Uh, hopefully this is a a valuable lesson for you. If you'd like more examples of this, uh, or, or or having trouble looking at an advertisement and seeing the logical uh, false equivalence that's being made, feel free to post it in any thread where this video is, uh, or I guess, presented. Uh, and uh, hopefully you enjoy. I will see you next video.